Welcome back to the inventory tutorial series where we are going to create some crafted items. So when we left off before we just fixed a couple of bugs and now we can actually start generating the functionality so that we can create the materials. So first of all I would need to add the, the sprites that I'm using for the new materials. So I have changed some things around. I can't remember if we were using streaming assets for um, for for the sprites earlier uh, or not but right now I'm using resources instead of streaming assets so I have changed around uh, inside my script I changed um, the way that we're loading these so we're loading them from resources instead of streaming assets but it has nothing uh, it doesn't change anything for the project if you just leave everything in streaming assets and add your new, sp new sprites and everything into streaming assets instead of using resources folder um, the only reason that I've moved it to the resources folder is because I needed to make a web build for my home page um, and the streaming asset doesn't work with a web build so I moved it to the resources folder and changed some uh, the, the loading path around and everything so if you already um, have everything in streaming asset then just add everything to streaming assets instead of doing it into the resources folder um, because it, it doesn't change anything for you but remember, if you download the project and you use my scripts, well, then you need to change the path from resources into streaming assets again, um, if you want to load from the streaming assets, or you need to move your stuff to resources folder. But uh, if you just follow along with this tutorial um, and you have your own uh, things and your own code and you have everything in streaming assets, then everything is still fine. Just add everything there instead of doing it in resources. So in my resources folder, I'm going to create a new folder called materials. So this means that if you're using streaming assets, you should simply go to your streaming assets folder and create this new one. So I'm going to click create and select the folder. And I'm going to call it materials. And in materials, I'm going to add the new uh, stuff I need for my materials. So click the materials folder. And then from off screen, I'm going to drag my new sprites. And as you can see, there is one for highlighted and normal for every single material I'm going to add. So when you add these new um, sprites here, remember to select all of them and go to the texture type and select Sprite 2D and UI and click apply. Because if you don't do that, then you won't be able to um, load them in here um, and show them on the screen. So now we would need to add two things to our game. We would need to add a new uh, item type called material and we would need to add a new um, a new script. So let's see, let's go to our scripts and then we should find our item script. And when you find your item script, you need to go to the top of the script here. And out here at the end, we have this generic weapon oops we go and after that you can make a comma and write material so now we have added the material type to our item type here because that's what we're using when we're creating your items if you remember we can make them consumables main hand and so on and this type of item here needs to be a material so when it's a material or when you have added that well then you can save this and then we need to add a new script to our our game so go back into unity and in here inside item scripts you would have to right click click create and select the new c sharp script and call this one material when you create that script you can double click on it to open it up And when the script is open, we need to set it up so that we can use it as an item. So remember, when we were using something as an item, we would need to inherit from the item class because inside our item here, we have everything. We have our sprite, neutral, our name, and our max size, and everything that an item in our game should have. And we need to get that functionality. Uh, we need to give it to our new material so that it also has a name and a description and so on. So the simplest way to give it this functionality is simply by inheriting from item. 
So now our material inherits from item, which means that it has all the functionality that is public or uh, projected inside our item. When you've done that, we can delete our start and our update like this. And then we need to make some constructors because when we create a new item in our game, we need to tell it the name, the description, the item type, the quality and sprite and so on. So to be able to do that, we need to make public material. And in here we need to give it everything um, to set it. So we need to make a string called item name. We need to make a string called description. We need to make an item type called item type. We need to make quality called quality. And we need to make a string sprite neutral. And we need to make a string sprite highlight. And what else is it we need? We need a max size, integer max size, so that we can define how many times the item can stack on itself. Okay. And when we've done that, we need to declare the scope underneath it, just like this. Okay. So right now we can define this when we make a new material. If we would do this somewhere in our game, and equals new material. Then you can see when we open this one up, we can define the item name and so on like this um, weapon description and so on, epic weapon and so on, when we define our material at some point. So this could be grass and this could be, this is grass, for example. So now we have defined that we can actually do this whenever we create a new material in our game. But we're not using these for, um, these parameters or these um, arguments for anything right now. So we need to pass it on to the item class here. And the reason that we need to pass it on to the item class is because inside the item class here, you can see in the constructor of the item class, we're setting everything here from its own constructor here. So we need to pass this on from the material to the item so that we can actually set all the values in the, uh, the object itself when we create it. So right now, we're not using it for anything, but we can do that by saying um, base, colon base, and then open up a parenthesis. Then you'll see that it asks for all these values here. And the values are already up here, or the, the variables are already defined up here in the materials constructor. So we can simply just pass them on by saying item name, uh, description, item type, and remember to pick the correct letters. If you write item type with a capital I, then it's not going to be this item type up here. This is the one we are feeding to the parent right now. What else does it want? It wants the quality, wants the sprite neutral, sprite highlighted, and it wants max size. There we go. So now we're actually passing everything on to the items so we can create our um, our material. So we need to do two more things. Um, right now we need to um, make a public material again. So we need to make a new constructor because we would also need to define our material with only a name at some point. Or actually I take that back. We don't need to put anything into the constructor here. Uh, we would only need to make an empty constructor like this. And the reason that we are making this empty constructor here without any uh, functionality in it whatsoever is because that when we serialize our items um, from the XML document into our game, um, the item serializer will need a empty constructor to be able to work. If we would delete this one, we wouldn't be able to transfer our items to the document and the other way around. So this functionality in, in the serializer would need this one. So that's simply why we need to use this. So I need to check one more thing in the use function here. Yeah. As you can see, we have public abstract use. And this means that our um, item or our material needs to have a use function on it. So right now, we're not going to do anything in the use function. But if we would build this, pretty sure, yeah, it will complain and say material does not implement the inherited abstract member use and that's because 
this one is abstract, which means everything that inherits from item needs to implement some for form of uh, use function in it. So to make sure that material implements use, you can right click on item, click implement abstract class, if you don't have Visual Studio, um, I'm not sure if Mono Developer can do this. If you can't right click and do that, you can simply just write this code down here. Public override void use slot item script. And we're not going to write any code here, we're just leaving it blank and purposed. Um, because we might come back and add some functionality to it later, but right now we don't want any use functionality on our materials. We only want to put them inside something so that we can use them. So let's save this. So now we can actually add the new f um, materials to our XML document. So we can either do it by opening the other uh, scene and adding it, but I'm going to do it the easy way. I'm simply going to add it to the XML document uh, by itself. So if you open up your um, XML document, you'll see that we have these different categories. If you remember from earlier episodes that we have um, a category here called consumables, for example, which indicates that all items in here, inside this tag here, consumable and consumable, are kind of consumables, which means they will go into the consumables um, category, and it will go into the consumables list. Under here, the name of the class is written. So this class is called consumables, as you can see out here. We have a class called consumable up here and this indicates it, this is indicated in the XML document right here. Underneath we have the item type and before we just added a new material type um, inside the um, item manager I think it was nope, item script yes so inside the item script here we added this item type and this item type was material and this is what is actually written here. This consumable needs to be changed to material when we made a material, and so on. So everything about the item is indicated in here. And we always start with a start tag and an end tag. So we need to copy paste this consumable. Just take this part here, just copy it, all the consumable information here, and go all the way to the bottom of the XML document. Because we would need to add the materials in the bottom of this document so they are in their own uh, inside their own tags. So after the equipment tag and before the item container tag, in here we will copy paste or we will paste our consumable. So our consumable needs to be inside a tag called material. So we need to do like this and write material and end it and we need to paste the consumable here inside this tag so now we have a material tag and inside that material tag we have an item called the consumable but our consumable or our material is of course not going to be a consumable it is going to be a material so our class is called um, material and that's why we need to go back into the document here and write material On that, the item type is also a material, as you saw before. We just called it material in there, so material. Like this with capital letters, because remember, um, I'm losing my place here. Here, Remember, it's written with capital letters in here as the item type, which means that our XML document also needs to have written this with capital letters. Then we have our quality, let's just make it common. And then we have the sprites here. So before we added the sprites to uh, to our um, our game here inside the asset folder. So if I go to my materials folder here, you'll see I have iron highlight, I have iron normal, and so on. So I need to select the correct sprites here because right now it's going to use the consumable sprite. So I'm going to write material. See if I wrote materials or material materials with an S. So it's important you write this correctly else it's got not going to work. And this is going to be um, iron normal. And write material skin. And write iron highlight. And I'm going to say this one should stack 10 times on itself. And it's not a health potion. This is exactly some an iron 
ingot or something like that and then we're going to this is an iron ingot and health and mana is not needed on it so we can simply just delete it because we're not going to be able to use the item so save this and underneath the material well then we can copy or not underneath inside material we can copy paste this material and paste it again and change the the name to or the sprite to wood normal change the other sprite to wood highlight and the max size to 10 is fine we are going to call this item name simply just wood and here we can write this this is a piece of wood um, and we can copy it again and paste it underneath and we can change this to what was stone normal and stone highlight so now we have the correct sprites as this and we also need to change this to stone and write this is a stone so now we have just created our three new materials we should have in our game but there is one more thing I would like to change now I was thinking about it um, as you can see this one's just called material but it, in, in, it contains materials more materials so just change this material name to materials with an S and remember to do the exact same thing down here just like this so we have the same tag in the top and the bottom so when you're done that you can save this and jump back into unity so now we have the XML document for creating or generating these items um, but I'm going to wrap this part up here so that uh, we can start looking at how we can add the items to the game in the next part by entering one of those boxes so we um, add the material to the inventory